right guys, I am back at my deck project here. Working weekend warrior style. So I got all this uh, two by 12. That's gonna be the fascia going around the deck. It's just the prime spruce stuff. I don't know where it is, what stuff you guys use where you're from, but that's pretty much what everybody uses for fascia because it's already primed and it's nice, decent wood, cheap. So all I'm gonna do to this is I'm putting a half inch round over on the bottom edge because that's just my style. I like that little rounded edge. And then there's gonna be a one by four secondary fascia going up against the deck where the tile is gonna come over. And then this belly band with a one by four is gonna be going around the whole house to kind of separate the different levels. So I recommend going to your lumber store and choose the pr appropriate lumber store. There's two kind of main wholesalers here in Victoria. There's Lumber World and there's Slag Lumber. And Slag Lumber, they just pile all their stuff out in the yard, put a tarp over it and it just gets soaking wet and the pile is soaking wet and it's in the sun. and the wood is usually just warped and garbage and you have to go through the whole pile to find any decent ones because with this, you really don't want any cup, especially with a two by 12. So I've got eh, about a 16th of an inch, which is fairly good. But even then, if you can get them when they're not warped at all, that's ideal. I had to go through the whole pile at Lumber World. Um, at Lumber World, they keep them in bunks inside a warehouse so that they're dry, they're standing up vertical, a lot easier to sort through the pile and pick out some good ones. So that's why I use Lumber World, just because I find they take better care of their materials and in the end that saves you a ton of time when you're installing it, not having to deal with bows and twists and warps and stuff because that can suck up a lot of time. So when it comes to cutting these, with the 2x12 being so wide, I do not bother with a chop saw. I just cut them with a circular saw, freehand. You just make a nice square line, follow that line and your miters and joints will be perfect as long as you're not wobbling with the saw so and it's a lot easier to cut with this because if you got to make an adjustment you can just take this up on the ladder and make a little adjustment or drop it down and cut it right there as opposed to having to take it back to your chop saw back and forth with big material that's a pain in the butt so i'm cutting this face this face is going to be along going along the side of the deck where there is a slope on the deck so i have to adjust that cut an inch taper in this then cut it to length miter one end put it up i'm gonna, and i'm gluing all my joints with pl premium that's the high grade construction adhesive that gives you a nice good working time and it really, really holds and never comes apart and will keep your joints from warping and when the sun hits them and stuff like that, it holds those corners together beautifully. That and like three inch screws and trim head screws anywhere you can hide them. So I've laid out uh, three inch screws every 16 inches along the top edge because I'm using a full head three eighths or a three inch screw because a one by four is going to be going over top of that. So wherever your screw heads are going to be hidden, always use full size heads because the trim head screws, they don't pull the wood in the same and hold it the same as a three inch with a full head. So, and even some places where your screws are going to be seen, I'd still use a three inch because Maybe I should have test fit this son of a bitch. Inside the miter here, before you put the next piece in, throw a three inch screw right close to the heel cut of that miter. Make sure you sink it past flush, obviously, so that the next piece will butt in nicely and that'll hold well. And then I'll come back after and put my trim head screws down here so the holes are easier to fill.
there's a critical point in your exterior construction and finishing fascia joints. Nothing worse than having a long span like this and being able to spot your fascia joints because they just didn't work out well. So what I do to make my fascia joints disappear, I do a 45 lap cut. The heel cut or whatever on this board, I cut that one at 45 small, like 44 degrees, like just a half a degree. Like on your saw, I just put the little, the little nick right on the inside of the 45. And then when I make this cut, I move that little nick on your degree scale to the outside edge of the 45. That way you know this one's gonna be a little bit longer and this one's gonna be a little bit shorter so that that front edge is gonna sit nice and tight. Then I put PL Premium in that joint, the whole surface. So you got a thick gasket that's gonna just fill in any tiny crack in the back and it's gonna just bond that joint together beautifully. And then I just let there, make sure there's squeeze out all the way along that joint. Let it dry, don't wipe it off. Come back the next day and you just trim it up with your knife. And then hit it with the sander. And I had to use the full 16 feet on this this fascia here, so I couldn't cut out that crack that happened to be at the end. It was the best one I could find at the lumber yard. But I got to fill that with some Bondo before we paint it up. I'll spot prime this, and when we put the top coat over that, you will not even see it. Just a perfect joint. It's worth spending a little extra time doing this sort of stuff because when you're using stuff like pine or spruce, prime pine, prime spruce, spruce, uh, especially in the summer months, it's going to want to warp and twist even after you installed it. So I recommend using screws and glue to hold it while it dries out. You can see that as I install the 1x4 fascia over top of the landing, the landing is twisting back and forth a little bit because it's teeter-tottering on the beam. Once I bolt my massive 4x14 stair stringers from the deck down to the landing, that section of the deck will be well supported and won't twist anymore. Well, that's as much as I got done this weekend. The good news is the deck fascia is done and we're prepped for tile. Well, actually, I still got to do the 1x4 around this landing here. Then everything's ready for tile. And I still got to do the 1x4 up above around the whole house and put the cap flashings on that fascia over the roof. So, whew, so much work left to be done, but it's, come on. For a Tyvek house, it's pretty dang sexy, don't you think? Hey, monkey. How you doing, little boy? I knight thee, Sir Bennett. <laughs> so, yeah, I know there haven't been a lot of videos lately, guys, and I apologize for that, but really it wasn't my fault because my computer hard drive decided to start overheating and nearly crashed on me. Thankfully, I got it fixed and replaced before that. And then also my external hard drive where I keep all my video footage for this channel also started to malfunction on me and I had to replace that. So almost $3,000 later, I'm back in action. So one day guys, I will finish this renovation and when I do, the video is going to be epic. Hey, pipe down you little what? Where'd you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Plumbing pipes? Oh. Looks like a junkyard around here anyways, whatever. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
Sunday, I gotta go eat some pizza because I'm just bummed out that I watched the Seahawks lose to the Titans. God help us, our season's doomed. Anyways, till next time, Samurai out.